focused and fearless. Here's everything you need to know this rush hour of September 23, Monday. I'm Risa Diaz. Jumpstarting Monday's rush with the murder of PMA cadet 4th class Darwin Dormitorio. Now with persons of interest and now considered suspects, the incident sparks calls for hazing to be listed as a heinous crime punishable by law. JC Cosico has the story. From mere persons of interest in the death of Cadet 4th Class Darwin Dormitorio, the three Philippine Military Academy cadets in question are now considered suspects. The Baguio City Police says it discovered additional evidence linking the three to the hazing case. The police did not name the three suspects, though said two of them are 3rd Class cadets, while one is in the 1st Class rank. The three are still under the PMA's custody, as authorities are looking into two more persons of interest. Meanwhile, the Volunteers Against Crime and Corruption condemned the incident, saying hazing should now be banned from all organizations and educational institutions. Ang mabigat kasi dito, naging kultura, uh, endemic no, sa lahat ng uh, uh, fraternity, sorority, or organizations like uh, 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 PMA, PNPA, uh, yung brotherhood na tinatawag no, na kung saan ang, ang uh, fraternal brother sisters. When in fact, sinasaktan mo uh, sa initiation pa lang, that leads to death, murder. As a result, the group is now pushing for hazing to be included in the list of heinous crimes and if possible, be punishable by death penalty. Recall that administration allies in Senate have since suggested reviving capital punishment, particularly for drug offenders. This is murder. Uh, while ginagawa yung hazing, uh, merong violence na elemento po dun eh. That's why it should be included sa heinous crime. Uh, punishable by reclusion perpetua or death penalty kung ma-reimpose to. It will serve as a deterrent. Senate Majority Leader Mig Zabiri, however, notes that hazing is already listed as a heinous crime under the Anti-Hazing Act of 2018. Zubiri says that what is needed is to strengthen the law as well as its implementation even further. The lawmaker adds that an initial investigation also showed that Dormitorio was confined twice at the PMA Station Hospital prior to his death. His remains were brought back to Cagayan de Oro on Saturday after the wake at the Academy. For News 5, JC Cosico, We Are One News. And here are the biggest stories from the dailies. The health department will start giving free polio vaccines to children aged 5 and below starting October 14. Filipino Star Ngayon reports that this will be the first rollout in Metro Manila, Laguna, and Mindanao. Residents may proceed to their barangay health centers for their kids' vaccinations. But for those who don't have the time, the DOH says the polio vaccine drive will also go door-to-door. -door. Now, you might want to gas up today. Oil companies are set to implement their biggest pump price increase of the year starting tomorrow. The price of gasoline is set to increase by 2 pesos and 35 centavos per liter. Now, diesel prices will be up by 1 peso and 75 centavos per liter and kerosene by 1 peso and 8 centavos per liter effective tomorrow, 6 in the morning. Now, the major price increases comes after the drone attacks that hit the two major oil plants in the state-run Saudi Aramco. And the Banner reports that skateboarder Marjorie Nidal failed to advance to the finals of the Street League Skateboarding World Championship in Brazil. Nidal failed to enter the top eight after only finishing 15th in the semifinals. Nidal only managed to tally 10.4 points in the said round. Now moving on to other headlines, meat processors and local hog racers are butting heads over the supposed impending cut in the production of ham for the holiday season. Shaila Francisco with the story. Meat processors reiterate that the public must not be afraid of African swine fever because it can only affect pigs. They add that pork is safe for consumption as long as it's thoroughly cooked. The Philippine Association of Meat Processors, or PAMPI, insists the public should not be afraid of buying processed meat like hot dog, bacon, and luncheon meat. That's because the virus would have already been killed should they have microbes brought by ASF. Ang African swine fever, ASF, hindi po siya naka-apekto sa tao. Ang tao ay hindi magkakasakit 
ng ASF. Ang ASF organism po ay namamatay sa temperature ng 60 degrees for 20 minutes. Ang ating processed meats ay pinaprocess sa temperature na uh, 70 up to 120. So lahat po natin na processed meats goes through the temperature. Therefore, wala po katatakutan ang ating consumer na hindi safe ang ating produkto na kakainin. Pampi admits that a huge number of meat imports in the country is due to the demand of the local meat processing industry. He explains that meat processors choose not to buy from the local market or from local hog raisers because of a certain pig weight requirement for the flavoring of meat products. Pampi adds the meat processors cannot buy liempo or pork belly in local markets because store owners will run out of supply for the public. The group is now challenging the government to help local hog raisers in meeting the demands of meat processors so that the industry will no longer have to rely on imported meat. Hindi po, hindi, dahil hindi namin gusto, but dahil hindi available yung formats na yan, government should assist the hog raisers para magtayo sila ng kanila mga slaughterhouses. Nag-attempt na po sila magtayo. Ang problema po, hindi na kukompleto. Nag-attempt na po sila dati na magtayo, hindi naman umaabot sa frozen format. Tulungan nyo ang hog raisers na magtayo ng kanilang setup para ma-provide nila yung aming pangangailangan. Meanwhile, local hog raisers say they are still capable of producing enough supply of hams this Christmas season, despite processors saying earlier that they will cut production during the holidays due to the ASF scare. In a statement, sa mga industry ng agrikultura or sinag refer to processors as the Mr. Scrooge who will dampen the festive Christmas celebration. Hog raisers say there will be no shortage of Christmas hams because they will source their hams from local backyard raisers and not tainted imports. Sinag is also urging Pampi to invest locally and to support the local hog industry. Shaila Francisco, we are One News. On to some weather news now. The Habagat continues to bring light to moderate rain showers over parts of the country. Pagasa says the southwest monsoon is still affecting northern Luzon and is set to bring cloudy skies and isolated rain showers over Metro Manila and the rest of the country. Now, the State Weather Bureau adds that the country will experience longer nights starting today due to the autumnal equinox, which signifies the coming of the winter in the northern hemisphere and summer in the southern hemisphere. Based on Pagasa's monthly astronomical diary, the autumnal equinox will occur today at 3.50 in the afternoon. The San Miguel Beermen settled for fourth place at the East Asia League Terrific 12 after bowing down to the Zhejiang Lions. Carlo Pamintuan with the story. After missing their opportunity to enter the finals of the Terrific 12 competitions here in Macau, the San Miguel Beermen are now targeting a top three finish before they shoot for a third straight championship in the PBA. The San Miguel Beermen were already without the services of Junmar Fajardo and Marcio Lassiter in the tournament. And they lost the services of Christian Stan Hardinger for precautionary measures in the game against the Zhejiang Guangxia Lions in the battle for bronze. The Beermen kept the game close throughout the first three quarters thanks to the brilliance of Des Wells with the help of Kelly Nabong and Alex Cabagnot. <laughs> However, they went through a rough patch in the fourth period, allowing the Chinese team to build their biggest lead of the game at 9 points, 86-77. to 77. SMB battled back led by Wells and Cabagnot as they trimmed their deficit to just 2 points. They even got a chance to steal the game as they forced a turnover with 0.6 seconds remaining in the contest. The problem though was that they did not have any more timeouts remaining, which meant they had to initiate the action from the other side of the court. The Guangxia Lions held on to a 91-89 victory and took home the $50,000 prize money. <laughs> Hindi masama yung uh, performance namin, uh, pero kulang pa rin talaga yung uh, preparation at saka hindi pa kami ganun talaga totally 100%. After gaining much needed international experience, the focus now shifts to completing the PBA Grand Slam for the Beermen. This experience of Pasano, I think, uh, could help a lot uh, in our uh, campaign uh, in the third conference because we're aiming uh, for the Grand Slam. From Macau, Carlo Pamintuan. 
And that's how the day is shaping up to be. Join us again next time for another round of Rush. I'm Riza Diaz. We are One News.